My name is Stephen, Stephen Chong. Welcome to Chomp's Corner. In my last posting, I talked about human nature. In order for us to see what human nature is, we need to have the combined knowledge of physics and biology. But it doesn't mean that a physicist can automatically see that human nature is selfish. In order to see a human nature is selfish, you need to see a living organism, a living organism in a very specific way. I have defined a living organism as a survival machine. A survival machine is a physical object which by itself is capable of doing two things. Number one, it is capable by itself to repair its own damage inside the body. So self-repair is one. The second one is by itself, at a certain point, it can reproduce more copies of itself. So it's reproduction. So from this definition, any physical object which is capable of self-repairing and self-reproduction, be it a virus, a bacteria, a fungus, a tree, or a insect, a human, any physical object which is capable of doing these two things is a living organism. Then the question becomes, is a robot that we create which is capable of self-maintaining and self-reproducing, will this kind of robot be living organisms? Well, definitely they will be, which is something very, very scary. Okay, so this is the definition of a living organism. In the definition, I have used the word machine, which a machine has several some similarities to a living organism. Number one is a machine is designed to do a certain kind of work. A, a machine has can do certain things. So are the living organism. But besides a one small thing, a living organism inside the body can do several functions which is necessary for it to survive. So this is number one. And in order for that machine, for any machine, be it a car, a watch, or a vacuum cleaner to do anything, it needs a very a highly organized body. Okay, if you want, you can so you get a, a, a old watch and take it uh, open the case and then you see the inside you will see how complex it is and i wouldn't i would not suggest that you should take it apart because once it's taken apart then you need to put it back together which i can definitely cannot do so in order for a machine to function, it needs a very highly organized inside and also those parts, those components are put together in a very specific way. Well, if a machine that can only do one thing has such a high degree of organization, imagine a living organism which has to do a lot of things including like a self repair according to the definition that we produce and there are some more things. Imagine how complex the bodies need to be. You need different parts to do different things, don't you? So from this analysis we can see a living organism needs a highly organized interior which would lead us to one consequence and which would where the second law of thermodynamic comes into play. 
according to the second law of thermodynamics. But if you Google it, it comes with several different versions. But essentially, all the different versions mean the same thing. is that every change in our universe would lead to a higher degree of entropy, which also means that orderly things, things with high order, or very organized thing uh, with a pattern or something, would decay into smaller things. And once it is achieved, then it is not, it's irreversible. But for our purpose, we only need to, need to, look, uh, to know that because a living organism, my body included, that is highly organized, that every part of my, my body, every cell inside my body will continue to decay unless my body do something to reverse the damage, to reverse the change, or to repair it, then at a certain point if my, my body, the cell, fails to do that, then will be the death of the self. self. And in, if enough cells in my body dies, then eventually, at a certain point, I will die also. So that's why a living organism will die, and that will bring up to a very important point. In order for a living organism to continue to live, it will need a continuous and uninterrupted supply of energy. Okay? To understand the energy relation of a living organism is the key to understand a living organism and its nature. Okay? A living organism needs energy not only in repairing itself, it also needs to make new molecules, complex macro-organic molecules for growth and to reproduce. And all these macromolecules, organic uh, molecules, come with very high energy price tags. Okay, to understand how a living organism uses its energy, how it gets its energy, and how what kind of energy currency it uses inside its body is the key thing to understand a living organism. And in my next talk, in my next uh, posting, I shall talk about what every living organism need to do, needs to do in order to keep functioning. The things a living organism needs to do in order to survive and the behaviors involved in order to survive. And don't be surprised that all these different behavior will eventually this to some sort of a hurtful behavior to other living organisms. Okay? To hurt other organisms in order to benefit itself is the trademark of being selfish. So tomorrow that in my next posting I'm going to continue to explore what selfishness mean and what it involves. Thank you for watching. Bye bye. See you next time. And take good care of yourself and love yourself. Bye bye.